There is a common sentiment in the Overwatch community that we are in a rock, paper, scissors meta, where one hero or heroes is super dominant versus another hero that is dominant versus another one that is dominant versus the first one, creating a loop of people constantly swapping to counter each other, and if you don't swap, you just lose. Now there's another anti-swapping sentiment which states that counter swapping is actually not even good because people use it as a crutch to not get better and they'll actually never improve because they're only counter swapping instead. They prove this by citing many one tricks at the highest ranks of play and note that low rank players often have incredibly large hero pools while higher rank players have much smaller ones. So what is the actual truth? Is counter swapping the meta in Overwatch or is it just a lie that holds you back? What is the best way for you to get better and climb in Overwatch? We're gonna cut through the nonsense and explain what the hell is going on. But like and subscribe for a free cyber truck on the house, and let's get into it. Now first off, let's talk about why rock, paper, scissors meta is not really real. You can actually play around a lot of counters. Nothing counters in a vacuum. Because of a 5v5 and the fact that your decisions play a huge role in whether or not you're actually successfully shutting down someone or someone's character, a rock, paper, scissors meta imagines that if they pick a certain character against yours, you're 100% gonna lose. And that's just not the truth. Just swapping alone is not enough to counter. And you know this because there have been many times you have counter swapped and still lost and there have been times where you have been countered and still won in addition to that if you're really great at your hero you can play around a lot of counters this is why there's a lot of people in the highest ranks of play that are stuck on one character we have rank one one tricks on symmetra and junk rat one tricks all over top 500 characters that have very little if not any counterplay to flying characters like far and echo but that doesn't stop them from adapting and finding ways to succeed even in spite of that weakness now, this doesn't mean that counter swapping doesn't exist because it does. And to explain what even swapping or countering is, let's talk about hard versus soft counters. So a soft counter is something that has positive interactions with another character, right? If your character soft counters another character, then you have the means to easily fight them, easily shut down their play styles, easily kill them, whatever the case may be, you have a way to do that. Now, if you're a hard counter, typically you have multiple positive interactions with that character. So it's not just one thing that you're good at doing against the character, you have multiple. And I want you to think of hard and soft counters as more of a spectrum or a spectrum of positive interactions. Let's take someone at the most extreme of that example. Let's take Widowmaker and Wrecking Ball, where Wrecking Ball has a ton of favorable interactions against a Widow. Widow cannot run away from a Wrecking Ball because Wrecking Ball has great mobility, check. Wrecking Ball is incredibly hard to headshot, and he has a high health total, which means he can't get one-shotted, and most of the time, Widow can't even trade damage with him. Another check. Wrecking Ball has the means to kill Widowmaker very easily, especially when a Widowmaker is standing still, and Wrecking Ball can chase Widowmaker no matter where she is on the map. All these things are positive interactions that get checked, checked, checked up to Wrecking Ball, making him a hard counter. Now you might be saying, is it possible for a Widow to beat a Wrecking Ball? Absolutely. Tons of Widows can beat a Wrecking Ball, but it actually forces you as a Widowmaker to play a lot more linearly than you regularly would. For example, a Widowmaker often wants to take some far angles that are at range, using her effective range to get a really good vantage point, a really good angle on the enemy, and get some picks, but if she ventures too far out by herself, she can get isolated by Wrecking Ball, and her range doesn't help her stay away from Wrecking Ball. So two of Widowmaker's fundamental strengths are just taken away because Wrecking Ball exists, and then all of a sudden she has to play much more safely with her team, but is she able to get the same value that she would be if she is playing this way as opposed to the other? way not even remotely close and that's why while a hard counter doesn't necessarily completely stop you from playing the game it can fundamentally change how much value you can have over the course of a round because you're forced to play in a particular play style that doesn't enable you to pop off and have high impact now that being said there's a problem with players that often counter swap all the time and it becomes the counter crutch I have coached tons and tons of players in bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and everywhere in between, and all of these players, or the vast majority of them, have giant hero pools. And I'm not talking about just like one, two, three, four characters. I'm talking about like seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes they'll play like the majority of the heroes in their role, or even a ton of heroes from like a ton of different roles. Now, what they'll often get in their head is when something happens, they want to swap instantly. Oh, they have a monkey? Let me swap off this character because monkey counters my Genji. Monkey counters my Widow. Or they go, oh, they have a monkey? Let me swap Reaper because I can counter that monkey. And here's the problem. They don't learn to adapt 
and they also don't play their counters correctly. Did you have to swap off of Genji and Widow to still have success up against a monkey? Absolutely not. Do you have to make sure that you're not super caught out of position without your cooldowns? Yes, but if you adapt to play fundamentally safer, then you're not going to be a victim to the character that soft counters you. And this is kind of where another fundamental difference between a hard and soft counter resides, even though, like I said, it is a spectrum. Against the soft counter, if you play more disciplined and you don't fall into situations where you are facing these people in a one-on-one -on -one or in an isolated environment, you can still play your character just how you would normally play your character. You just have to make sure that if you're dashing it on Genji, you're killing someone 100% and you're able to dash out so that you don't dash in and then you're stuck and you have no way to get out. So you're just playing more disciplined. I mean, honestly, you should probably play more disciplined anyways, but you could get away with more up against not a soft counter if there's no soft counters or any counters of any kind on the enemy team. But up against a hard counter, they can fundamentally change how you would play. It's not enough to just be disciplined. You also have to maybe change up how you're approaching your fundamental play style. If I'm playing Genji up against a whole bunch of characters that I can't dive, Mora, Briggs, Sim, all these characters combined sitting in a stack, I can't go and dive their backline at all. Like, I can't play Genji like I would. And maybe I'll even do something like poke a lot until I build up Blade and only Nano Blade or something like that. Play Blade Bot style Genji because I can't play in a fundamental way at all. I have to completely change my play style to get value. But going back to the Winston Reaper example, you got to ask yourself, why does Winston get countered by Reaper? Well, maybe we'll say, oh, well, Winston will jump in and I'll just shotgun him and I'll kill him. And yeah, a bad Winston would definitely just jump in, ignore you, and die to you. But if you allow that to become your experience where you're like, every time a Winston's going to play that way, I'm just going to swap to Reaper and then kill every Winston I come across. That being said, a good Winston would never do this because a Reaper challenges or contains a certain amount of space from the Winston. And if a Winston fights that reaper head on he always loses but if a winston picks his battles wait for the reaper to fade to the left or the right or go for his own plays dives the back line kills them and then the reaper comes to peel and it's too late there's a lot of different ways to play around these counters you're not locked in to a rock paper scissors no matter what counter you're playing it can change how you're playing it can change the discipline of how you're playing but it doesn't make it so you're automatically going to lose and this and many reasons are why if you rely on swapping too much or you start to think about the game in only swaps like oh if they're playing that character and i swap i'm guaranteed to win or if i'm playing this character and i don't swap against their counter then i'm gonna lose you not only cap your understanding of the game but you also make yourself far worse at the heroes that you could have just adapted on instead you ask pretty much every low rank player and they'll say that winston counters genji but you will almost never find a grandmaster genji swap off when the opponent pick a Winston it just makes no sense and look I'm not saying that you should never swap off but it should be very hard to force you off your mains being taken off your carry is not what you want to make it easy for your opponent to do at all and you should always be looking to adapt against your hard and soft counters alike before you take the route of counter swapping while swapping right now might give you a better chance of winning the game in the moment it will not be worth the lack of improvement you face at the characters that you could have learned how to adapt on on, and it could be one of the reasons why you're never improving or climbing past the rank you're in. Now, the next section, though, is working smarter, not harder. Even in spite of everything I said, what if someone can play their hero well, knows what problematic playstyles a counter denies, and can also play their counter well? We're no longer talking about developing yourself into a better player. I'm talking about a player that knows what they're good at and knows how to counter things with their game sense and understanding. You gotta understand that every hero has tools that don't always fit the job at hand. Even if you're amazing at doing one thing, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be easier or you could do it better with another hero or another character. I want to pull myself in as an example. I believe I'm a rather flexible player and I can shut down better players than me by putting them in a situation where they cannot play to their full potential on their main or their carry. Now, I'm not necessarily hard countering. I'm just playing a character that has either a soft counter or some few positive matchups against them so that I'm not just in a 50-50 situation where skill is the only metric in that moment and you could say hey i'm just running away and i should just try to get better and that is probably true i should try to get better but 
You gotta understand that flexibility is also a huge skill in Overwatch. Knowing how to play many things is a skill even used in scrims and pro play. If I simply swapped to counter but didn't play those characters well, or if I didn't understand exactly what was the problematic playstyle that was really holding our team hostage or dominating our team, and how to specifically counter that, then I could swap to the wrong thing, or I could play the counter incorrectly. Only because I am flexible and understand how to play multiple things well, and I understand the problem, can this ever work when it does. So to take in that sentiment that flexibility is not a skill, flexibility is running away, flexibility is not something that you should learn, I don't think is 100% true. Well, if you over rely on being flexible and swapping to other characters, you'll never gain mastery over anything. But once you do gain mastery over some things, you can use flexibility as a tool in the same way that you would use any other tool to do a job easier or better. Yes, I can fucking eat cereal with a fork. Does that mean I'm going to eat every cereal I eat with a fork? No, I'm going to go grab that spoon because why the not? I know how to use a spoon too, okay? <laughs> But what does that mean for you? What should you do to climb? Should you become someone that's flexible? Should you become someone that's like a one trick that's really, really good? What should you do? And this is my suggestion to you. Focus on improving with a very small hero pool. As small as you can get it, and don't swap easily. Always look for ways to play your hero into hard matchups and counters and learn how to adapt. Find ways to still get value even against some of the hardest matchups. And if you're dying to these hard matchups, think about if there was a way you could have adapted your play to still stay alive or still pulled off something even in spite of those things. After that, I want you to learn more heroes slowly over time that can be used in situations that your main hero struggles in fundamentally. As an example, you could learn a hero that is good against a hero that denies or shuts down your main hero fundamentally or is a hard counter. For example, if you're a Widow main, why not learn a Sombra or something along those lines as a complement to your Widow so that if that ball is just always locking you down and following you around, swap Sombra and you can still get value. And if they swap off, you swap back. Easy as that. Don't throw away counter swapping entirely. It's a skill much like everything else, but requires a good foundation on each hero. And you want to still make sure that you are not auto swapping against things that are hard for you to deal with. You're trying your best to become better and better and a player capable of dealing with a lot of the hard matchups for your main, because that's going to push you to become an even better player at that main. The last question you might have is what should developers do to balance having hard and soft counters or the really unfun situations where there's a character that feels like they can deny an entire other character's playstyle. Now, I personally think that counter swapping automatically brings enough value if someone knows how to play the character they're swapping to and what they're doing that the ultimate percentage carryover isn't really necessary, which right now you get to have a certain amount carry over when you swap. They are dropping it down a percentage as of season eight, which I think is a good change, but I don't even think it necessarily needs to exist at all personally, but that's a little bit of a controversial opinion. I think more than that, new characters that are introduced should not be designed to shut down entire playstyles or strategies. I think that Briggs' introduction as a character that was literally designed to be anti-dive was a fundamental flaw in an idea, a fundamental flaw in a design. There should be a lot more gray. I think everything should exist in the soft counter category. And ideally, we would never have any hard counters. No character that fundamentally forces you to play in a boring or very linear way. I don't think it's very healthy for the game, but this is the reality we're in, and you should learn how to adapt and play in it. But if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Smash that like, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and good luck on your Season 8 grind. See ya. Thank you for coming.